You know, one of the greatest drawbacks in our country is though it is supposed to be the largest democracy in the world, in fact, only a very small microscopic educated minority controls the lives of millions and millions of illiterates and half-literates. Democracy cannot be meaningful and purposeful unless it is participatory. It's typical that you will find a correlation between increase of literacy and uh, the, um, uh, the growth of a more participatory form of government or state, irrespective of uh, the ideology of the state that may differ from country to country. You see, democracy is unreal and incomplete without literacy among the people. See, literacy is a very fundamental requirement to participate in a democratic process. With little or no land holdings in the village, the laboring poor are driven to the city for survival. Lured by the prospect of a better life, they come to the city only to find themselves dispossessed, alienated and ruthlessly exploited. Poor and unlettered, they live shattered and insecure lives at the very edge of society. They are a grim reminder of the economic and social disparities that exist in our society. Social disparities are more clearly and sharply present in the field of literacy than perhaps in any other field. Because, you know, if you, I'll give you two figures. In the district of Kutayam, urban, non-scheduled male literacy is 100%. In Jaisalmer, rural, scheduled caste, women literacy is 0.6%. I'm talking about India, not of Germany and Uganda. There are two parts of India, and this is the difference from 100% to less than 1%. Like I was in a district called Sidi, a totally tribal district. Literacy there, when I was there, was around 20%. Then I, at, at another time, I was in Indore, where literacy is well above 50%. And I found that whatever program we took in Indore, the response of the people, the end result was much better. But if we had to take a program in Sidi, uh, we, we faced all kinds of difficulties because our first task was to explain it to the people. And then when the people are not educated, the, the middleman, the bureaucracy, the entire system exploits them. And the, the, the results and the advantages of our schemes, our projects don't reach them. In a modern industry where more sophisticated technologies have to be applied in order to get better quality goods and higher and higher level of productivity has to be achieved, yeah, yeah, learning, learning, for formal learning, a formal literacy is very essential. For example, take many of our um, engineering plants, take Maruti, or for that matter, a steel plant. Yeah, even an ordinary employee is expected to read a drawing, read the manuals. If you follow strictly the technological discipline, you have to naturally follow certain procedures. And here again, every time we innovate a new thing, be it for energy conservation or for simplifying the work procedure or building quality or reliability in the product. 
we change our procedures, we change our uh, methods of um, manufacture. The person should be agile enough to understand and adapt himself. And this is not possible only by the word of mouth. In a small establishment, it is possible. You can even take him out and train. But in a large establishment, where such things have to be understood through literature, published literature and uh, classroom lectures, a, a level of literacy is very essential in order to attain higher levels of productivity. Many of our development programs, many of our anti-poverty programs uh, assumes that uh, everybody is literate. And that is why they are designed in such a way where they have to fill up so many forms, they have to go to all these big uh, bank offices and government offices. And that is why they have to deal with the formal world and with the official and also with the government world. And there they feel very much disadvantaged. Uh, and that is why we so often find uh, that uh, there are some middlemen or, or uh, some kingpins uh, who have been sort of dominating all our programs uh, at the grassroots level, at the village level, and they take over, sort of. Not only edu edu economic, that's why it is to be pointed out. People sometimes think that only by economic development, the weaker section, the tribals, the schedule class, they will advance. No, that's why they say that we, the economic and the educational, both, development are needed, is needed for their emancipations. Unfortunately, in our system, we have been linking literacy with jobs. People invariably say, if you're going to make someone literate, are you going to provide him a job? The key issue is literacy is required for self-respect, self-esteem, and to be an active member in the democratic process. पढ़ना लिखना सीखो ओ मेहनत करने वालों पढ़ना लिखना सीखो ओ भूत से मरने वालों literacy is at the beginning of social awareness and genuine democratic participation. It gives a voice to the poor and language to the unlettered to seek and obtain justice and equity. How can there be participation in the absence of education and literacy? I think that this adult education has a very positive role to play to make democracy really alive and functioning in this country. Some people express their fears or whatever you call it, apprehension, that this may lead to a conflict situation. I definitely think that it will be, it will not lead to any conflict situation. On the other hand, it will lead to lessening of tension because the powerful sections take advantage of the illiteracy and ignorance of the poorer sections of the people. Once they realize that they are also cognizant about their rights, their privileges, they will think twice before they try to exploit them again. So far, the literacy movement has been sort of a philanthropic movement. Literacy movement cannot succeed as a philanthropic movement uh, by feeling that some people, uh, the rulers uh, or the parties say, no, no, our uh, country should be more literate, little more literate. No, little more literate is no good. Kothari Commission has suggested in 1966 itself the if literacy movement is to succeed, it has to be done on a war footing. It can succeed in five years. It cannot succeed in 10 years or 15 years. To my mind, the political climate question really boils down to saying that uh, there's, there's got to be um, a wider assurance uh, 
uh, there's got to be a wider uh, sort of uh, message given by uh, the state apparatus that um, it is interested um, in um, remedying the situations of mass scale oppression of people. What I mean is that you cannot have a situation where you are, uh, say, where the state is neglecting uh, the needs of, uh, let's say, lakhs of people in a context like Bhopal, uh, where uh, people have been waiting for years now after the world's greatest disaster, industrial disaster, took place there for basic minimum measures of legal and medical redressal. You can't have millions of people waiting like that for you know, uh, their bit of justice, and at the same time expect uh, that a literacy initiative will succeed. You cannot be uh, usurping millions of people, say, across the Narbada Valley, off their homes in the cause of a developmental activity, and at the same time expect that a literacy drive will succeed in that area. If you want anyone to be educated in that adult group of 50 to 35 in tribal areas, the first and foremost thing is that we must compensate for the wage loss that occurs because he is coming to our school or our adult education unit. Secondly, we will have to revise our curriculum according to his own milieu. Third, we will have to teach him in his own dialect in the, in the earlier days. And fourth, we will also have to send very highly motivated people in tribal areas. Because today, if you go to a tribal area, there would hardly be a school where all the teachers are coming. There would hardly be a school where the teachers are spending the entire time in the school. I think that if we can really design adult education programs in such a way to remove the drudgery of the rural women, it will really help them. And then they will be on par with the men who become literate first. Why they are lagging behind is that we have not really conceived of programs which will impart adult education, literacy, functional literacy, and at the same time help them to do their jobs better and find some facilitating factors to do their work. For instance, from morning till evening, several hours they spent to collect fuel wood and water. Have we done enough to bring water to the doorstep of every rural woman? They collect fuel. Have we helped them to find better alternative for fuel and not struggle with the wet firewood all the time? Gender disparity in our society is extreme manifest in the fact that most girls have no schooling or drop out early from primary school and they are tutored through the work they have to do all the time. You know, to my mind, uh, it is high time that we change the priority even in the field of education. We may spend a lot of money uh, on uh, higher education. But when the base itself is not strong, you know, there is no, uh, no point in doing it. You know, today we take uh, great uh, uh, pride in saying that uh, India has uh, the largest technical and scientific uh, personnel, uh, the largest pool of personnel. But we conveniently forget that we also constitute the largest illiterate population.